that underestimates Finley. I don't know how you ever could. for day two of the World Juniors. Game one for underdog Austria as they take on 1-0 Finland, the first of a quartet of games from Alberta today. And this is from coming onto the ice warm-up. They come out the same tunnel and watch Finnish alternate captain Kasper Pudio. He is not happy with the Austrians blocking their way and gives them a prolonged earful. A little early animosity to start your day. As we say hello Canada and welcome to day two of the 2022 World Junior Hockey Championship. James Duffy once again alongside Bob McKenzie. Day off for Canada today but a chance to scout their opponent tomorrow in Austria. And is it possible to achieve one of your tournament goals before you've even played a game? Well apparently Austria when they come here one of the main things they want to do is not be relegated. To stay in the top tournament. Well the double IHF announced yesterday that no one will be relegated again this year. So boom they are in to next year's tournament. Now Finland has much loftier goals as we bring in Gordon Miller and Ray Ferraro. This tournament has significance for all the players that play in it, Ray, but when you're a top-end draft prospect for the upcoming NHL draft, there's even more so. Brad Lambert got off to a good start yesterday. He did, and probably needs one, given the way the year has gone for Brad Lambert. He's been a highly scrutinized player for the last couple of years, a player thought of to be at the top of this draft class, but he's got two goals in 24 games in the Finnish Elite League. He's played a lot on the outside of the game. At the U18s this year in Texas, he had five assists in the tournament. He does a lot of this. He can really open up the defense. He's got great feet. He can move the defenseman around. He creates lots of space. But last year in the tournament, although, albeit younger, of course, he had one goal in seven games. He doesn't get to the middle of the ice near enough for a player of his skill. Maybe as he gets older, that's where the impact comes from. But he was terrific in the opening game against Germany. This is Austria's fifth time in the top division of the World Junior Championship. The Austrians have only faced the Finns once. That was in the 2010 tournament in Regina. They lost 10-1. to you heard Ray talking about Lambert, the guy he set up twice yesterday, Samuel Hellenius, has already won up his dad, Sammy, who earned 1.7 World Junior Games back in 93. Samuel, the son, four goals, six points in eight games over the past two juniors, and son making a much bigger splash in Alberta than dad, who was drafted by Calgary, but played just seven games with the Flames. Boys, we're talking about Lambert, but a couple of other draft eligibles you're watching closely today. Yeah, in our preseason rankings uh, on TSN this season, we had Lambert at number three overall. We had Joachim Kemmel, his teammate in Finland, and on this World Junior team at number nine. Well, they've reversed positions. We did a survey of the scouts coming into this tournament, and Joachim Kemmel has now moved up to number three out of ten in this tournament, uh, playing in this tournament, and Lambert has dropped down to number eight. So that was by virtue of a strong performance at the beginning of of the Finnish Elite League season by Kemmel. We'll keep an eye on that storyline today. As for Austria, Marco Kasper, he's their captain. He plays in the Swedish Men's Hockey League uh, for Rogla, and the NHL scouts think he's a potential first-round pick, but they want to see him in his peer group and see if he can excel and get into that first-round status this year. Kasper, as a 16-year-old last year, set up Austria's lone goal in the tournament, scored by Senna Peters. Uh, so yes, they'd like to win a game, but first they have to score. This is the first of four today, Russia, Switzerland, Germany, Czechia, and Sweden, Slovakia wraps things up from Red Deer. Finns trying to grab Seoul. First place in Group A with a victory today. Gordon Ray back with the drop of the puck right after this on TSN. The 2022 World Junior Hockey Championship is presented by ESSO, proudly fueling Hockey Canada since 1984. By Nike, official gear of Canada's national hockey teams. By TELUS, we're using the power of our purpose to help make the world a better place. Together, let's make the future friendly. And by Tim Hortons, the official coffee of Team Canada.
The 2022 World Junior Hockey Championship is brought to you in part by Skip the Dishes. Cheer on our team in true Canadian style with your favourite order on Skip, the official food delivery app of Team Canada. It's game time, Canada. Let's get hungry. And by the 2022 Chevrolet Silverado, the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. Chevrolet, find new roads. It's day two of the 2022 World Junior Hockey Championship. First of four games today has Austria taking on Finland in Group A here in Edmonton. The officials for today's game are Robert Hennessy from the United States, Morgan McPhee from Canada are the referees, John Ray and Tommy Nitala are the linesmen, and you do see a Finn working a Finland game, and the IHF has relaxed the restrictions that he said not allow officials to work games involving their own country. Juha Yakula starts in goal for the Finns, plays for Kalpa Kupio in the SF League and the Finnish Elite League. Has an 864 save percentage there. And Sebastian Ranishitz, who plays for Victoria in the Western League, is the goalie for Austria. He's made two starts for Victoria, lost them both, hasn't played since mid-October. And Dependent is the head coach of the Finnish national junior team for the second straight year. And behind the bench for Austria, Marco Pival, who was supposed to be the head coach last year, but his club team did not release him due to concerns about cross-border travel for COVID, so he finally gets a chance behind the bench here today for an Austrian team that was not relegated last year because the IHF removed relegation and won't be relegated this year either. One goal for 29 goals against last year for Austria. The player to watch, as Bob mentioned, is in the middle, 19, Kaspar. He's the, he's the Austrian's best player. Marco Rossi is a terrific young prospect from Austria who's aged out for this tournament. A draft pick of the Minnesota Wild. And now a chance at the side of the goal for Simon Tybel. He contracted COVID last year and had some long-term effects from him. This year, Ray, he's a point-of-game player as a 20-year-old in the American League for the Iowa Wild. I think we had a little lesson as we judge these kids in this tournament. Uh, you know, Rossi was, was nothing that we had heard about. In comes Simon Tybel with a chance. Steaming into Ranishitz. And Ranishitz holds his ice, and the face off will come outside as that was Kaspar Simon Tybel barreling in. And yeah, just to finish that thought, Rossi was so ineffective, we thought we couldn't believe that he didn't play. Well, it turned out he wasn't right, wasn't healthy. Here's Simon Tybel. I think he's had a terrific start to the tournament. He's a dynamic player, man. He loves the middle of the ice. He wants to drive the net, and he's going to shoot the puck every chance he gets. But Ranishitz has to hold his ground as. Simon Tybel runs right into him, so his first stop is a tough one, and it's both the puck and the finish forward. Had to stop a player, too, which is never easy. Back to pick it up is David Reinbacher, who plays in Switzerland in the top Swiss league. A couple of these Austrian players play for other leagues and play in their top leagues as the puck bounced into the finish bench. I have to say, if this game was played on downhill skis, the result might be a lot different. However, <laughs> it's on a flat sheet of ice, and certainly the, the Finns are one of the, the world's strongest hockey nations, and Austria is far lower down the chain. I mean, they come to this tournament as well, Gord, with seven of their nine defensemen are playing in their first international tournament ever. Here's Lambert in, shoots, that goes high. And now pulled free by Hellenius. Back at the point, Tumpi Niemela. Back down to Hellenius, who had two goals in Finland's opener against Germany. Took a while to get credit for the second one. It was scored in the first period to change the scoring in the third. Niemela had that taken away, and a chance now for the Austrians, but that's out of the reach of Oscar Meyer. Watch that stick! Loose at center ice. Engelmuller plays it back. The, the thing that will get exposed here over time with the Austrians is a is their ability to skate, their agility, their quickness. And you start getting exposed into your zone, you get moved around, and that's where the troubles will become for Austria at some point. Tim Geis plays it back in deep. Looking there for Finn Van E. They've got a defenseman, Mateo Mitrovic, playing forward on this fourth line. And nine defensemen on their lineup, just just uh, 11 forwards dressed here. Austria has been working on its program. The Red Bull Academy is a 
hot house for a lot of top German prospects in addition to Austria. Yeah, there's there's only one way to improve, and that's just skill, skill, skill. Worry about the tactics of the game later. It's skating, it's puck handling, it's ability to, to move around the ice, and that's what the academies have to be focused on with these players as they develop. And it takes time. You know, you're not just, you're not going to get start an academy and three years later, everything's okay. Luca Erna tries to play that ahead, but once again, the puck bounces into the bench and play is called with two and a half gone here in the first period. Well, as the Austrians get their feet wet in this tournament, Finland comes off a 3-1 win against Germany. A much harder game, I think, than most people felt. They, the Germans hung in there. They didn't make things too easy for Finland. The second period, Finland really controlled much of the game, but that was a game they had to push a little bit, and they, the Finns do get back a forward, Roby Yarventi, an Ottawa pick who's playing in the American Hockey League. He's back in the lineup. Here he is for the first time in the tournament. And Yarventi's got it now. He was one of the Belleville Senators who contracted COVID, so had to sit in protocol waiting to come into the practice and game environment for the Finns. Pukio with it. Had that poked away. One of the differences, of course, is he was in Canada already. Right. Hamel Salmi plays it across. Alexi Hamel Salmi, who was the top defenseman at the under 18s in Texas in the spring. Another player's really impressed me in the, the first two times I've seen him in this tournament, the, the, you know, the exhibition game that they played against the United States. And yesterday, heady player, really smart with the puck. Hellenius drops it off to Lambert moving in. Got Vanish, it's down to center, and pass score! And that is Billy Koivinen. And the Finns grab an early lead. I thought Lambert should have driven this to the net, except he holds it, and as he holds it around the back of the net, he opens up all kinds of room. Nice play up the middle of the ice to Hellenius. Lambert, I thought, had a shot, but he's seeing the play. He sees the next move, and he finds Koivinen, who's coming in on the back door. Lambert just freezes the goaltender. Ranishitz, who's now outside the net. Uh-oh, you're in trouble. And he can't quite get back. Koivinen had an assist in the first game. He's got a goal here in the second game, and the Finns have a lead three and a half minutes in. Plays for Karpat Olu, a Carolina draft pick, second round pick in 2021. Yeah, if you don't know who they're drafted by, just guess Carolina. They got 10 of them here in this tournament. And three playing for the Finns. I think with a pretty full complement with the big club of finish to sit. Three assists for Lambert now in the tournament. There's an expression in scouting, Ray, for this tournament that you can't, if you're draft eligible, you can't hurt yourself in the tournament. You can only help yourself. And Lambert, early on, is helping himself. Well, on the, on the back of a really difficult start in the Finnish Elite League, just two goals in, in the 24 games that he's played. And as Bob mentioned earlier, one of the guys he, he's fighting with for draft position as much as you do that is his teammate, Joachim Kemmel. And Kemmel's gone the other way in the first 25 games of the season. He's had an amazing start with 12 goals. And, it's affected their draft rankings for sure. The captain Marco Casper flips that across place, as Bob McKenzie mentioned, in Sweden for Rogla in the Swedish Hockey League. You mentioned Kemmel, not just a teammate of Lambert here, but they're also teammates on their club team in Finland with Yiva Skyla. A race for it, hustling back is Lawrence Lindner. Well, that's convenient for the scouts. <laughs> Look at go look at a couple of players projected in the top 10 or 15, and they're in the same team. Taller with it. Lays that down to Casper. And Marco Casper wearing the full shield as an underage player. And that's stripped away. Niemela drops it back. Finns will have the day off tomorrow. Play the Czechs on the 29th. Austria's got Canada tomorrow. And now the centering pass from... Robi Yarbanti knocked away. So laughing. Feeds it back down to the finish zone. Icing called against Austria. In the game yesterday, Sammy Alanius had a couple of goals. It's a gorgeous breakout pass up the middle of the ice. It opens up the space as Hellenius is in position to take that pass. You see Ranishitz has gone way outside the net on his left, expecting Lambert is going to shoot the puck. He finds Koivinen around the back of the net, but that was a brilliant breakout pass by Kasper Butio. 
another returnee for the Finns who had a couple assists last year, but Putio split the defense with that pass to Helenis and or to Helenis, and there's nowhere for the Austrians to react quick enough to close that down. Finns have 10 back from last year's team that won a bronze medal. Beat the Russians in the bronze medal game. And Masalmi goes back. He was tied up. Here's Helenius back with it. Well, this is an intriguing prospect. A second round pick by LA. As that long shot got through, that's kicked away by Yakulo, the finished starting goaltender. He's six foot six, Ray. Yep. And just think they've got Quentin Byfield, is about what's Byfield? Six foot four, six yep. foot five. Yeah. And uh, those are a couple of centermen that are in their development chain. Well, the Kings do share a practice facility with the Lakers, so if the hockey thing doesn't work out, go across the hall and try things out at the tall man's game. One nothing the Finns lead here in the first period. First game on day two of the 2022 World Junior Hockey Championship. I'm hungry brought to you by Skip the Dishes and a closer look, Ray, at Brad Lambert, the 18-year-old, whose dad, Ross, is from Kindersley, Saskatchewan, but it's been a long time in Finland. A very talented player watching him in warm-up, his agility on his feet, deliver the puck from different positions on the ice. He's got a great start off in the tournament. You know he'll feel good about this with three assists in the first four periods of the tournament. Confidence breeds more, too. Once you once you feel it, you feel like any play is possible. Ruben Rafkin sends that ahead, chips in by Ronnie Carbonet. The battle for it. Down low, Kelly Weissenden works it free. Weissenden plays that back. And Rivera with a shot that bounces off the end board, steered away by Ranishev. Harrell lays it up ahead and it's moved out by Tim Geis. Finn Van E moves ahead for Austria. Banks that down. Austrians have had some hard luck over the years in international tournaments. Remember the 2016 Worlds? The only way they could be relegated was if right. they went to another game went to overtime and a specific team won it. And that's exactly what happened. Tim and Tyler moves in, but a hand pass called. Against the Finns. Now, Gord, you were talking about Samuel Helenis, the six foot six centerman, and for the LA Kings, and Casper Simon Tybel's a, a third round pick of the Kings in that same or in the 2020 draft, and he's 5'9. So they've got players of all different sizes. I I really see something in Simon Tybel here that I think he's gonna find a way to push his way into the National Hockey League. He's smart, he's strong on his feet. He's not big, but he is a determined player. I really like him. And by the way, the Lakers no longer shared the practice facility yeah, with the Yeah, they Kings. went and built their own. <laughs> but when you were there, they shared, right? They did. We were the junior tenant, I would say. <laughs> fuck, fuck. There's Casper with it. Woo. Up ahead to Rauer. That's knocked away. Leave Played it, around by Yaktala. Shots are 4 2 in favor of the Finns here, nearly going, and the play's offside at the finish blue line. The Finns will, at some point, I suspect, pick up the pace of the game here, and right now it's being played at a pace that Austria is pretty comfortable at. You know, the shots are 4 2. They haven't been swarmed in their zone yet, and if Finland gets their, their foot on the pedal here, that's where the game separates. Austria scored its only goal in the tournament last year against Russia. Baum trying to knock that free. Scooped up by Oliver Kapanen, who had a busy day for the Finns yesterday in that win over Germany. Plays on the power play, kills penalties. Kapanen's a, got a good size, a six foot one, a Montreal second rounder. And Thought he had a good game while he didn't get on the score sheet. There's a prominent role for this Finnish team. Back up, outside. Lead pass to Meyer. Oscar Meyer plays for that Red Bull Academy in Austria. That shot's knocked away. It's a lot of Munich players play there. Munich sends a lot of guys there. And there's an ownership synergy. Look out. And now a chance for the Oscar Meyer young man. 
Backhand shot stopped in tight by Yatkula. But Meyer, who mentioned a product of that academy, gets the first good scoring chance for the Austrians. Now Hlani is back the other way. Works it in shoots, and that goes off the stick of Netsasani, up and out of play, but a good look a moment ago for Meyer. A loose puck in the middle of the ice, and Meyer gets out pretty clean. Shows some good speed here as the puck will be chipped off the boards, and he's going to get in between the finish defense. Good close by Rafkin to force him onto the backhand, but Meyer gets a good shot away in the, the most difficult stop for Juha Yatkola early in this game as Meyer had a bid to tie this game up. Thomas Vanek would be the best Austrian player that played in the NHL. Austrian born and trained, that would be. That long shot hey, is blown by Radishitz. Hey, hey. But Minnesota has high Ooh, hopes go. for Marco Rossi. Oh, I almost fell there. That would be embarrassing. <laughs> Four minutes to feed the referee. <laughs> There's Marco Casper. We'll see where he ends up getting drafted this year. You mentioned a lot of the scouts want to see him in his peer group. Playing in the Swedish league is a is a pretty tall task for a 17-year-old centerman. There's there's not much room in that league. That's a, a pretty well-disciplined league. There's a couple of goals, six points in 24 games. Played back by Koivinen at the point. Long shot by Hemoselmi, still loose in front. And now Putio teed that up. Played back across and scooped up there by Pevarinta. Putio, another shot that goes off his stick. Vicen it. Long wrist shot. Radish should save. He lost the puck for a moment. It bounced high off the meshing and play is called. As the Finns start to cycle the puck around, you see Austria just gets tighter and tighter. So. Finland will have all kinds of zo offensive zone possession with the puck. The, the goal of Austria is going to be to pack this in and make it impossible for that puck to get to the net. There's a good block. Out, out top as Rohrer blocks the Putio wrist shot. Another chance to time oh, rips that. <laughs> that went just wide. Puck still there. This is the top finish line, the most Puck's dangerous in. line. Easy, six down white, six point. down white. Nerman with a long shot. Watch stick. Hirvonen. Ronnie Hirvonen, who was shaken up for a time in that game yesterday against Germany. The captain of this finished team plays it down. Mata. Drops that back in the long shot, taken there by Nermi. Here to have a round of shit. Hirvonen back with it. Back at the point. That long shot just no, wide no, from no, Derby. Yemela no, no. jumps up. As the Finns make a change, the Yemela drops that back and off the bench comes Curry Aho, who didn't play in the game yesterday. The fan on that shot. Here's Aho back at the point. That shot was off the foot of Geis and out. Putio moves in. Moved off the puck there by Reinbacher. And Reinbacher pokes it ahead. Ball. Got that just across the blue line and out. The Austrians can start a change here. Nine to go in the opening period. Long pass chipped up. Goes over the glass and out of play. You're watching the 2022 World Junior Hockey Championship from Edmonton. Action tomorrow. Taking on this Austrian team, coverage starts at 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 Pacific. It's a cold day to be doing that today. It was minus 30 this morning. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a little much. A little much. Got outside for about eight seconds today. Is it that long? That, that'll be, I'll probably double it on the way back into the hotel. We get soft out in D.C. <laughs> we get four inches of snow there, and everybody's pumped. They're like, oh, okay, that's enough. <laughs> We're placing around, jumping up his Vero. And Brad Lambert back in the corner with it. Drops it back, and that shot taken by Carmen and deflected wide. These lines had a really good start to the tournament, both yesterday and today. They had a couple of goals, the two by Hellenius yesterday, and they got one already today. Bouncing puck knocked down by Vero. 
Plays it back across for Rafkin. Up ahead to Koivinen. To Lambert. Kalenius goes steaming to the front of that. Here's Vero with it. They move Vero along. Shot tip. Kredish at save. And the rebound off the post, but it was hit, knocked down with a high stick. And play is called. Now that wouldn't have counted, as you mentioned, the high stick. The whistle blown as soon as Hellenius touches the puck. A really high stick. Oh, yeah, that's the, the tip in front of the net by Vili Koivinen. And actually, Reinischitz makes the, the save here. And Hellenius rings it off the pipe. And Masami drops it back. Eight to go in a 1-0 game here in the opening period. Bison and on it. Angles in the corner with Lawrence Linder. Back at the point is Putio. That wrist shot partly blocked. Lorante tries to play it back, and Putio has it back, rings that around. Hamasalmi. That wrist shot got through, and Ranishitz made the save. Hamasalmi with it again. Moves in and shoots at the flex high. Picked up now by Carbonet. Battle for the loose buckets. Batted out by Engelmuller that appeared to hit the Austrian bench, but play continues. Ray, you played in games like this internationally, the World Championship, where you're the heavy favorite, as Finland would be here. Tough, uh, tough to be engaged early. You, you, you know you're a better team. You know you're a deeper team. One of the other things that happens is the coach tends to play the bench full, so your minutes go down, and sometimes you find yourself a little bit dozy and I would say it's been a decent start for the Finns but they just haven't had their foot on the pedal yet and maybe it, some frustration sets in nah, I can for sure I mean they've, they've not been it's not been a physical game or no. a chance for Mate and Titans turned away by Radishitz what if the game gets physical that's when you feel like that see what title again ticked off the outside of the post Played right back in by Niemela I'm watching this, and eventually they're going to break Austria down here with the way that they're cycling the puck. They're just too quick for them. Nermi, that long wrist shot got through. Ranishitz kicks that away. Shotsky piling up here for the Finns now 12 to 3. And a centering pass missed Hirvonen. And Nermi plays it back in. Simon Teibel centers it, loose puck. Ranishitz a point blank save on Ronnie Hirvonen. Well, Ranishitz is going to be busy here as. The Finns continue to cycle and control the puck in the offensive zone. Simon Teibel hits a goal post and then sets up a chance from behind the net. The puck's going to pop out. He's got the whole side, and he rings it off that left goal post up over top of Ranishitz's glove. And then at the end of the play, Simon Teibel's got the puck behind the net. And he throws it right out front, and it's a quick bang-bang play for Hirvonen, and he stopped right in front of the net. Guy who's tried to kick that ahead, Ben Ease. And he rather plays it back for Reinbacher. And it's back down to the finish zone. Yarventi. Chips that ahead for Kapanen. In comes Joachim Kemmel with it. Kemmel. That long shot punched up by Ranishitz. Still loose in front, and Reinbacher picks it up. And the air Rapkin goes back for it. And drops that back to Vero. One of eight Detroit Red Wing prospects playing in this tournament. And a couple of years ago, it was the Kings that had eight or nine picks no. in. And those kids start to develop out a little bit. And Detroit's got a pile this year. Shot Talked about Carolina, of course. Playing it. Back for Niemela. Shoots. That's a little wide. And of course, you with Detroit, you've got all these picks, and then you add to a Moritz Sider and Lucas Raymond, and starting of a really good, talented young core. Plenius peels back in the corner, walks it and shoots, kicked up by Radishit. The pressure continues here for the Finns as Koivita tries to center it. Loose puck to Lambert, rolled off his stick, and Bohm plays it back up for the Austrians. He'll try to sneak off on a change and. That didn't get quite far enough, so the Austrians can complete it. Now a loose puck goes to Auer. 
And played back in by the Austrians as Nimala goes back for it. Four and a half to go here in the first bridge. Still 1-0 Finland. Emma Salmi snaps that pass ahead. Finds Carvinen. Now a centering pass. And Weissman couldn't quite reach that. Hingebuller. Through the middle of the hour. And Auer backhands that back down wide of the finish goal. Call that icing with 407 to go. Still to come today in Red Deer, Russia plays Switzerland. Then you've got Germany, Czech here. And the nightcap is Sweden against Slovakia. An entertaining opening day of the World Junior Championship. And lots of goals, lots of close games. Uh, looked like the Swedes were going to run away from Russia, and Russia made it close. And, you know. We're going to hammer that wide. Here's Mata. Back to Hirman. Long shot, knocked away by Ranishitz. The guy who hasn't played since mid-October, he's looking pretty good. It's fresh. Had a tough start, and he played the two games there. A loose puck. Radish is trying to pounce on that out of his reach. Here, but it lost them both and then gave up a pile of goals. Hasn't played since. And he's been really good here. He's made some good stops. And the Austrians ice it again. Face off back to their zone with 327 to go. They've got really tired players on the ice now after the back to back icings. Well, not only the back to back icings, but they just chase the puck in their zone the entire time when you. When you can't get your hands on it, you never really relax. There's the Hirvin and toe drag, and through the screen of Simon Teibel, Ranishitz finds the puck to make the save. So now here, the, the Finns are on their third different line on the ice with the same group of five for Austria. Rafkin to Kemmel. Now Rafkin steps up, his centering pass goes off the skate. Kemmel with it, tees it up and shoots off the goal post. Another post hit for Finland as Kemmel counts it back up. He hit that one flush. Back at the point, Raft getting a rolling puck. Trying to get a settle for him. Plays it back down to Kapanen. Kapanen to Rafkin. Rafkin's shot was blocked. Fires it wide again. Picked up by Kapanen. At the point is Vero with a wrist shot. Finishes make the stop on that. 18, 18 shots in 17 minutes and two goal posts that don't count as shots for the Finns so far. And just one goal to show for it. Rafkin back for it, got tied up there by Casper. And it loses the sign of the goal. Another chance for Casper to roll off his stick. That was Vincent Rohrer on the four check for Austria, causing trouble there. Lead pass for Lambert. Tied up by Urbanek. Now back in front, Linder's got it back. On the sideboards, Helenius. Just shrugged off that check from Rohrer. At the point, Nurmi tees it up oh. and shoots, and that was blocked. Great shot block there again. That's Rohrer, two, two shot blocks for him here in this first period. Well, that one hurt, that was a heck of a block. Now a centering pass, score! It's Hellenius on the feed from Koivinen, and it's 2-0 Finland. Eventually worn out after a terrific shot block by Vincent's Rohrer. Now you're down to at a four and a half skaters as he's not able to, to move so quickly. Lambert loses the puck, but a terrific play by Koivin in behind the net. The Carolina second rounder is stronger on the puck here as he pulls the puck away from Lucas Toller. And Alanius has got his third goal of this tournament. He's got one goal in 27 games in the Finnish Elite League, and the giant centerman is off to a great start in this tournament. Can't imagine what the grocery bills are like at the Alanius household because his dad was a giant as well. Uh, you're feeding the six foot six teenager. Uh, that's, that's a bottomless pit. 1.46 to go here in the first period. Finns have a 2-0 lead. Out of the gate yesterday, Samuel Helenus, Brad Lambert, and Vili Koivinen 
have been the Finns' best line. The first shot from Lambert hit the leg of Hellenius. That's his second goal yesterday. There's his third, but he showed off his game at both ends of the ice. Prior to the second goal, he had intercepted a pass in the goal crease that would have made the game 2-2. He started that play and then went all the way down the ice to finish off the Lambert feed and essentially put that game away at 3-1. Toller back for it. Got bottled up in the corner. And now swinging back is Finn Van E. Back up to center ice. Here's Emosami with it. And carving it back at center ice. 80 seconds to go here in the opening period. Round robin play concludes on New Year's Eve, and the battle round commences with four quarterfinals on January 2nd. Geifs drops it up to Cheering, centers it. Geifs couldn't find it. Hamasami's back for it. Simon Teibel lifts that down to the Austrian zone. That's the sign. He goes back and loses the sign of the goal. Ranishitz hangs on to that. Ray, the question was asked yesterday why the IHF would rule that there'd be no relegation this year. One of the parts of the format this year is that any team that can't ice a roster because of COVID would forfeit a game or games. So you could see a team unable to complete the tournament and get relegated due to forfeit. So the IHF ruled that's not a proper way to do it. So next year's tournament will have 11 teams, we're told. Well, that's being reviewed. Well, they're basically protecting the integrity of the top teams in the tournament. Right. Now, Cherry moves out. And we got a penalty behind the play. Yarvidi is going to go off. He got a high stick up on Lawrence Linder. They're checking to see if Linder's bleeding, and it will be a high sticking penalty. The question is if it's two or four. In the box. In the box. It's a two. He was just asking if it was two or four on the way by. <laughs> just wanted to know. <laughs> well, there's the high stick. As Jarvin T gets his stick up on the Linder's face, and so the Austrians will have their first power play of the game. It's the first power play for anybody of the game here, late in the first. Pass for the sentiment. I think you've heard that before. As moving in to take that shot was taller. Yeah, you ask a simple question and you get bossed around. You're like, I just want to know the answer. And he's like, yeah, I'll tell you later. Beat it. <laughs> Tends to lead to an argument. Meyer had that knocked away and sent back down the ice. From my experience, yes, anyway. Yes. Time expires here at the end of the first period. Austria will have a minute and 26 seconds of power play time to carry over into the second period. Shots were 21 to 4 Finland in that opening period. It's game one on day two of the 2022 World Junior Hockey Championship. Our first intermission is coming up from Edmonton. The first intermission is brought to you by Verbo. Download the Verbo app and get your team together today. Playoff race is pretty crazy this year in the NFL. The Saints are seven and seven, still very much alive in the wild card race in the NFC. The Dolphins seven and seven still have a chance for a wild card spot over there. Monday night football wraps up your week, 8.15 p.m. Eastern time, 5.15 Pacific on the home of the NFL, TSN. Back with Bob McKenzie. Our next segment, Bob's going to do a little World Junior Draft ranking special. And Brad Lambert, who we've talked about a lot, has fallen in your overall draft rankings from the beginning of the season. Part of that, two goals, six points, and 24 games playing in Finland. But maybe this kind of tournament can kickstart him, and he's been terrific so far. Yeah, it's interesting. As we mentioned in the pregame, uh, Lambert was number three on our preseason rankings. His line uh, teammate in Finland and teammate here at the World Juniors, Joachim Kemmel, was number nine. And it's kind of reversed a little bit because Kemmel got off to such a strong start in the Finnish league, and Lambert got off to a slower one. But i got to be honest, just, you know, a game in one period in, 
Lambert's been much more noticeable than Kemmel for whatever that may be worth, but it's been in setting up people. And Ray talked about, well, maybe you would have liked to see him drive the net there, but he still made a great play to set up a goal. And then on the second one, gets the second assist, doing some good work down below the goal line. And big Hellenius, uh, he's looking good for Finland as well. So, so Lambert, is he's, he's jumping. He's making things happen. It's all assist right now. Right. But uh, nevertheless, uh, it doesn't hurt to be playing really well because that's what he's done through four periods of hockey so far here at the World Juniors. It doesn't hurt to have Hellenius, too, as a finisher. Those three goals now tied with Canada's own power for the tournament lead very, very early. Uh, one period into day two of the tournament. Look at there. There wasn't a lot for Austria there. Four shots total. But we have to give them something. Did you, something you liked in there? Yeah, probably the best chance they had was an opportunity where they break down the middle of the ice and go to the net and get a shot. And I mean, you don't want to focus too much on someone's name, but when you've got a guy named Oscar Meyer on your team and he gets the best chance of the period, we're showing it. So Oscar Meyer, number 21 for the Austrians, breaks down the middle, and it's really too bad for the Austrians that they couldn't take advantage of the two or three opportunities they had in that period because you could see as the game wore on there, as the period wore on, that the Finns were really starting to wear them down, and it's a slippery slope once that happens. Yeah, it didn't get a lot of mustard on the backhand. Uh, we have lots more ahead for you in intermission number one with Bob McKenzie. As promised, he'll unveil a draft list of players only in this tournament, all the eligibles for 2022. Fins up 2 nothing after one here at Edmonton. Character. Integrity. Respect. If we bring good sportsmanship on and off the ice, we can help end bullying. You should pay me, don't call me baby When you did me so wrong We ride here, we'll never change Count up the bands sticking up No rubber band is speaking up Chain is so heavy, can pick it up Came with the gang Well, this is a tough turnaround for Austria. Tough start to the tournament when you get the top two teams in the division back-to-back. -back. Canada will have a day's rest. Uh, the Austrians likely exhausted after this barrage from Finland and facing the Canadians, 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 3.30 Pacific, 4.30 local. We're on the air with the pregame show. I have been plugging Bob's draft rankings more than Bob plugs Bobby Margarita uh, over this tournament so far. Not possible. Uh, yeah, you're probably right about that. Uh, so we did a special draft rankings. This, this one only includes players who are playing at this tournament eligible for the 2022 draft. Okay, Shane Wright was number one in the preseason ranking. He's still number one on our ranking here. Now, Logan Cooley, who got a nice assist last night for the Americans, uh, he's number two and a, a threat to be right up in, in that range in the overall draft. Joachim Kemmel, who are watching in this game with Finland today. Remember last year, Yuri Slavkovsky, six foot four, 16 year old? Well, he's gotten even bigger and better, and now, now he's one of three Slovaks in the top 10 here. Uh, Russian Daniel Yura, Denis you're off. Uh, then you've got the uh, Slovak defenseman Simon Nemec. David Juracek, who was injured in yesterday's game. We'll see what his status is for today. Brad Lambert in this game, of course. Marco Kasper also in this game. And Philip Mesar, another Slovak. So that's those are the guys that uh, coming into this tournament, how they stack up with the scouts we talked to. For those out there who aren't disciples of your overall draft rankings, as I am, uh, a couple of guys who would be on here who aren't playing in the tournament? Yeah, Ivan Mironyshenko didn't make the Russian team, and he's a potential top five guy, so to be clear. And then some people are going to say, what about Connor Geeky in Winnipeg, and what about Matt Savoy? And, and American fans are going to say, where's Frank Nazar and where's Isaac Howard? That list was only guys that are in this tournament right. uh, draft eligibles. Those other guys are all threats to be top 10 players in the draft as well, but they're not here. Shane Wright is number one on the list. Considering his standards, hasn't gotten off to a great start in Kingston and not a great start to this tournament. So how... Is it possible that he drops out of that number one spot? Right now, I'd say no, but anything's possible. What I would say is this. All the scouts I talked to, and there were eight scouts that I talked to, all eight of them had him solidly at number one. That said, 
he did get off to a bit of a slow start. He's really picked up his, his pace in terms of point production since then. But overall, there's been a little bit of a less than a wow factor in terms of his overall game. But the flip side of that is he's really been dedicated to game without the puck. So there are scouts that are kind of saying we want to see more from him. Right. But right now, he's still number one. You've always told me it's difficult for guys in their draft year to fall down based on the performance of the World Juniors. Yeah, you can never get hurt. Your draft ranking right. can never be hurt at the World Juniors. A, it can only be helped. In a 19-year-old tournament that just happens to have some good 18-year-olds, 17-year-olds, 16-year-olds. Do nothing Finland after one second period after this. The first intermission was brought to you by Verbo. Download the Verbo app and get your team together today. There's Team Canada coming out of their dressing room, the Oilers dressing room. They're about to practice at the Downtown Community Arena, which is also in this complex here. Again, day off for Canada. They take on Austria tomorrow. Thought Lambert might have gotten a second assist, kind of a courtesy assist on the second goal, but he's got one. Alanius has his third. There's your verbal scoring summary. Here are Gordon Ray. So it's 2-0 after one, but uh, it's not that close. No, that's uh, that score is misleading. This could be... Uh... A wide margin here as the Finns just completely dominated the game, although I didn't think at any point like they really had their foot on the gas pedal. Too strong, too quick, too skilled for Austria, in particular in the offensive zone. The puck would go low to high or side to side. The chances kept coming where Sebastian Ranischitz actually was really good in that first period. They weren't loading up shots from the outside. They were loading up shots from 15 feet in front of the net through the traffic, through the screens. And but for a couple of goal posts, this could have been four or five nothing. The Finns get a, a nice cycle goal at the end from Hellenius as that line punches through again. Both goals in that first period. Austria will start the second period in the power play for a minute and 26 seconds. Belarus won promotion in December from the Division 1A tournament, but as we mentioned before, there'll be no relegation this year, so right now 11 teams are qualified for the top division next year. And here is Martin Urbanek on the Austrian power play. Toller with it. Winds his way in, Toller rings it back around, but Yemela stepped in front of that, and Topin Yemela plays it to the line, but not out. One thing you hear constantly from coaches in games like this for the team that's the favorite, don't get bad habits. That's a nice thing to say, but it's, <laughs> it's really hard to, to stay focused. The other guys are playing as hard as they can, and you're kind of into the, into the deal about 70%. There have been some upsets over the years, most notably, of course, Kazakhstan beating Canada in the seventh place game in the 98 tournament. Belarus beat the United States in 2005 in Grand Forks. Well, with it. 20 seconds to go on the power play. This is Casper. Marco Casper had to roll off his stick, got his back up. Casper feeds that back. Taller. He's it across, and Urbanek fanning that shot. Here's Casper back with it. And the Imola once again can't clear it up. Urbanek feeds that down to Rauer. And the cross ice pass missed Toller. Long point shot goes just wide. No shots for the Austrians on that power play. We're going to get another one here. Nope. Thought there's too many men going to be called, but the Finns escaped that one. Hellenius winds through center ice. That's knocked away from him. And here is Putio at center ice poking that ahead. Brad Lambert swings back to pick it up. That long pass misfired. Icing called against the Finns. Now, it's not a big deal, Gord, but you talked about uh, bad habits and with the bad habits come impatience as you see that long attempt by Pateri Nurmi, just a long pass up the middle of the ice. It's an icing call that really doesn't need to be there. It's there was nothing in the middle of the ice. There was no play to be had and they try to force one. They 
it's plays like that when they start to stack on top of each other that the coaches will be on the lookout for. Kalanios plays that back to Nurmi. Playing in his first international tournament for the Finns. And Putio back forward. He's a returnee from last year. Knocked back by Koivinen. Looking forward to the second game here today. Germany against Czechia. As Koivinen works in. Germany's put up a good fight against Finland yesterday. They feel that extra five hours of rest that they had is going to be a little bit of a benefit for them as the, the Czechs played the, the late game last right. night. Right. And they, the Czechs most likely, I would assume, are without their star defenseman, David Juracek. No official word on that yet, but it just it, it didn't look like that's the type of injury he's coming back from today. Rafkin bottled that puck for a moment. And Angel Vero has it back. Plays for TPS Turku in the Finnish Elite League. Meyer drops that back. Oscar Meyer had a great scoring chance for Austria in that first period. As Vero goes back. Pleasure in the corner. Engelbuller has knocked off the puck and Oliver Kapanen has it back. That's a familiar hockey name to fans in North America. His uncle Sammy played a long time in the NHL, was a heart and soul player. Philadelphia and Carolina primarily. Oliver Kapanen's father was a longtime goalie in the Finnish League. And Sammy had a motor that just wouldn't quit. Simon Tyvel works in and shoots. And Ranishitz makes the stop. And when he was done, he had left everything on the yeah, ice. Yeah, there was there was not much left to give for Sammy Kapanen. A, a terrific career. There's Sebastian Ranishitz who has faced 22 shots in the game here. Just Last year he played three three times, had three losses as the Austrians lost each of the games and lots of point blank shots that you have to deal with. There's Aho with a long shot, tipped in front, rebound, score! And then a late bop on Simon Teibel after he scored it. Didn't appreciate that. There's going to be a penalty to Austria coming at the end of this, but Finland's grabbed a 3 nothing lead. Now that'll, it looks like it'll be uh, Kaspar with the penalty. If they call one, as he got all tied up with Sima Tyvel. Point shot, traffic, rebound, and while not the biggest guy, talked about him earlier, Sima Tyvel will find his way in toward the traffic as he gets inside of Kaspar. That's a frustrated play by the Austrian captain. Just a simple shot by Ajo, and when it's deflected by Mata, there's Seaman Tyvel inside of Kaspar to chip this into the empty, empty net. Now, Joel Mata has gone off for Finland. He grabbed Kaspar afterwards. He's the only man in the box right now. The officials are talking about it. The Finns are trying to get an explanation here. Finland number 32, minor pally for a rough. Austria number 19, two minutes for a rough. Play will be four and four. And there's the explanation. I'm really impressed, as I've mentioned, with Simon Teibel. Here's the penalty on Kaspar, and the headlock from Mata will earn him two minutes. But I continue to be impressed by Simon Teibel as he can really shoot the puck on the move, and he gets inside of the traffic, inside of where the rebounds are. He's not hes not timid at all. He's a, he's a good player. At four goals last year for the Finns. Putio brings it out. Back at the point in this four on four. And Oselmian shoots. It goes off a leg, up and out of play. When coaches are always talking about moving your feet. You'll see Simon Tyvel's behind the, the hash marks out in the corner, but instead of standing out there and waiting for a rebound 20 feet from the net, he gets himself into. The blue paint. Now you got to get inside the defender as well. It's Kaspar does not do a very good job of boxing out, but he gets inside of the defender. And when the loose puck's there, he's the nearest guy. He just chips it into the net. Hour brings it in. That 
Shot was knocked down by Niemela. Topi Niemela. Skates away from Auer and drops it back to Nermi. Kapanen. Works it on Netsasani who knocked him off the puck. Yarmati moves in, but the play's offside. And the faceoff will come down the ice. They'll call it deliberate offside by the Finns. So the question would be asked, Ray, by a lot of people that don't watch a lot of international hockey is why would teams, why would you want teams like Austria in a tournament like this? And the answer is this was Germany a few years ago. It's exposure. It's it's growth of the game. It's if you don't get exposed to better competition, you'll just settle into the level of your competition. And it's that way in a lot of things. And so these smaller countries, they're trying to build their game up. They're trying to become skilled enough to play with these better countries. And as I said earlier, it's just not a it's not a short process. I mean, you've, you've got to develop a group of kids. They've got to be in an age group and in an age out tournament. That becomes a real problem is you get some good players, then really good players, and then all of a sudden they're gone. And now a penalty to Finland. Sammy Hellenius will go off for the trip, and so Austria will get a four-on-three power Blue. player. Two minute Meyer, holding. Hellenius is chasing back on the puck and he wraps his left arm around the the body here of Toller and when Toller goes down Austria will get to a four on three power play and just to finish the thought Ray if you want another sport comparison that was Canada in soccer for years down around 80th in the world rankings funny all these young kids come to play and or come come of age rather and start playing at the same time and and I don't know if there's been much much more fun watching the Canadian soccer group in these last few months. Urbanek plays it across. Toller with a hard shot and a save there by Yadkula. Toller to Urbanek. To Auer. Of course, Kasper, the Austrian captain's in the penalty box. Now a drop back. Urbanek shot scores! Martin Urbanek, power play goal, and Austria has as many goals as it had in last year's tournament. Man, did he step into this one. Martin Urbanek as they play a little pitch and catch down, down low and up high. Urbanek's gonna get in a little closer. And the return feed from Luca Auer is on the tape and he just hammers it up over the glove. Oh, it goes right past Kapanen and up over the glove of Yatkula. Might not get a good look at it, but this is a perfectly placed shot. And it's 3-1. Austria is on the board. Urbanek is one of six players on the Austrian roster who plays primarily for the Red Bull Academy. Which has pumped millions of dollars into hockey development in Central Europe, primarily for Austrians and Germans. Well, they get one here. And you talked about bad habits, the Hellenius trip at center ice. You just you just don't want the game to be closer than it needs to be if you're the fans. Look out, here goes Simon Teivel. Simon Teivel in on Urbanek. Simon Teivel in, and Urbanek stripped with the puck unconventionally, but got it done. And he's had a good 30 seconds there as Simon Teivel's a half a stride away from being out in the clear. Knocked down by Putio. And the teams are back to five on five. Simon Tyvel centers it. Jam play in front. Mata digging for it. But Ranishitz has it. 19 year old Martin Urbanek has the goal for Austria. It's a 3 1 lead for Finland here in the second period. There's always something new on Crave. Don't miss exclusive shows and the latest hit movie streaming this January. New plans starting as low as $9.99. A month. Thirteen and a half to go here in the second period. And Austria. He's on the board with a power play goal and did it as we mentioned with Casper in the penalty box. And that long shot drifts in. Aho took the shot. Might have been tipped in front by Weissen, and that gets by Radishitz. And the Finns restore their three-goal lead. I think this hits Rohrer out near the point 
It's, I don't know if Vicenin is going to claim this or not, but face-off win. And the long, simple wrist shot. Oh, it hits him right in the backside. <laughs> oh, yeah, beauty. Take it, get it on the board. Ajo just flings this at the net. <laughs> hits him right in the backside. And Ranishitz is like, man, I got enough problems back here. I don't need this. No, Vinus, Vizenin can call home and say, I scored today, and he'll say, how was it? Deflection? See, it's all fact. Doesn't have to be anything else more than that. It's 4-1. Is that reminiscent of your first NHL goal? Yeah, mine was off my left knee. Ray Newfeld, it was a power play, took a slapper. And so I often tell people, yeah, it was a power play goal, slap shot. Not mine, but hit me right in the foot. Left knee went in. <laughs> Right in the form in Montreal, too. It was a beauty. Ray Newfeld was a great Edmonton Oil King at one time. Ray Newfeld looked after me in my first year. That was a big, strong right winger. He used to call us Big Ray and Little Ray. And man, he's, what a good man he is. Valorinta moves in. That long shot. Francis makes the save. Bison. Plays that back. Emil Vera works it and shoots. Renich is a stop on that. And he holds the rebound. The, the thing that the Finns will be most happy with here is it was kind of a 50-50 draw. They had help. And then it's just a shot to the net. It's how often do we talk about, oh, you got to get traffic, you got to get pucks to the net, yada, yada, yada. But it actually matters. And that's one of the reasons why it does. You get a break when the puck goes to the net. Three goals scored in two and a half minutes here in the second period. As Samuel Selmy comes in and shoots that deflects wide. Then they're plays it around. And Hamas Selmy fires it right back in. Linder back to pick it up. Lost the puck to Kapitan, centers it. And that shot taken by Kemmel was blocked. Rolled back down to the finish goal wide of it. Icing waved off as Mateo Mitrovic got there first for Austria. He's a defenseman, as you mentioned, playing forward in his fourth line for the Austrians. We have nine defensemen, 11 forwards dressed for this game. By the way, Billy Ottavina, the defenseman for the Finns, not dressed today. Played for Kitchener a couple years ago. He's a Seattle draft, is not dressed today. Here comes Casper with it. Marco Casper works it and shoots. It goes off Vero, up and out. Help us make the game we love more inclusive. Submit your game-changing good deeds today at ChevroletGoodDeedsCup.ca. Casper's dad, Peter, played in five world championships for Austria in the 2002 Olympics in Salt Lake City. Had a good year in, in Sweden. It's, you know, plays in the three and four role in that in that league, a very good league as a 17-year-old centerman. A little bit of second power play. Lambert centers it. And a chance there for Koivinen. and he was brought down. Thought the ship of the penalty. Fired back in by Putio. It goes over and out. And now the Koivinen appeal begins. To be heard by deaf ears. As Koivinen drives the net and gets pulled down, runs into the goaltender. Second rounder by Carolina. Koivinen's got a goal and an assist here, and he gets inside of Sabladding as he goes to the net, and he ends up, and Reinischitz has had some traffic around him today, hasn't he? As Simon Teivel ran into him in the very first shot of the game, and now it's Koivinen. I've liked this game. He can scoot around the ice pretty good. He's 19 points in 30 games in the, in the Finnish Elite League, and Still only 168 pounds. The growth is going to come with size and strength for him. Do you remember the first time we saw Sebastian Ajo? Yeah, we were Street underneath. Tank? We were underneath the rink, and he was in his t-shirt and workout shorts, and he looked like he was 12. I was like, "That's Sebastian Ajo." I couldn't believe it how small he was. Really good player, though. Yeah. <laughs> He's okay. <laughs> no, even then. <laughs> The MLS sends that to center ice. Simon Tyvo drops it back. Mata feeds it across. Hervinen in, shoots, and Radish has got a piece of that, and the puck goes up and out again. 
And that long pass up the middle of the ice and Simon Taibo comes off the left wing to cradle it. And then all of a sudden it's a three on two. This line's a good line with Mata doing a lot of the heavy lifting in the middle of the ice. There's Topi Nimala, nice pass right on the Ooh. tape. And Mata finds Irvin in across the seam and another goal post. That's three of them, watch crossbar, three of them for the Finns today. Isn't the crossbar the post? Well, not really. I don't think so. The post is vertical. Okay. Here's Vero with it. Well, they have different names. <laughs> do. Is Vero again firing it through? I think. But, but if you want to say it hits iron, it's, yeah. that's the same. Lassen shoots that trickles down around it. He'll hang on to that. Scrum in front of the net, and Ranishit's able to, to corral that. Halfway through the game, you see the shots and the score indicative of where the play has been. Right. Interesting to note, though, that as a Winter Olympic country, per capita, Austria, one of the greatest in the history of the games. Their dominance in downhill skiing, cross-country sports, Biathlon, they've been good at that as well. You know, it's the, really the first event that, outside of hockey that turned me on to the Olympics it was in Innsbruck, Austria in 1976. Franz Klammer? Franz Klammer. I remember the call. They said he's all over the course. And if you ever fall down a YouTube rabbit hole, pull up Franz Klammer's gold medal race in Innsbruck, Austria. Just imagine the pressure that was on him yeah. as the last skier. I was like, oh, there is other stuff other than hockey that is really cool to watch. Innsbruck was one of the host cities for the 05 World Championship, the Men's Worlds, there in Vienna. The, the notable event there was the appearance of Slovenia for the first time in the top group, and 17-year-old Andrzej Kopitar. Well, I thought you were going to talk about the notable was the price of a coffee in Vienna. <laughs> there was that. That is notable too. Jeremy <laughs> plays it across. Nobody can squeeze more out of per diem than you though in Austria, I'll tell you. It's very impressive. It's hard. Now Hellenius tries to center it for Lambert. That's knocked away. And Toller plays it back to center ice. Koivin for Hellenius, long Koivinen. shot, Radish it steals that away. And here again is Billy Koivinen. Back for Nermi. Feeds in for Koivinen. That centering pass and Radish it's a nice stop, rebound and Mata couldn't cash. Nermi back with it, shoots, it goes off the leg of Toller. Lambert back with it. Lambert back ends it back in front, fired wide by Niemela who'd moved up. A Siri pass. Hirvonen fired that through, and Urbanek went flying as Simon Tavo picked up a loose puck. Simon Tavo centered it, but that pass was knocked down. What a good defensive play by Sabladik. <laughs> Robert had that knocked away by Vero. Inside eight to go here in the second period. And Urbanek, the Austrian goal scorer, knocks it down. Coming up in just over an hour from now in Red Deer, Russia will play its second game of the tournament against Switzerland. Where are they starting in goal? We don't have that quite yet. That's that'll be interesting as Yaroslav Askarov, Askarov was pulled yesterday again. That'll be a, a really interesting development as the tournament goes along in that very tough Group B where Russia. Sweden, the United States are all in there together with Switzerland and Slovakia. And the Slovaks think they have a, one of their stronger teams in years in this tournament. We got an excellent goaltender who's back this year, Lakotsi. Was excellent last year and was terrific yesterday as well. That game seemed safely in hand too, didn't it? At 1.3 nothing. And Martin Kromiak with a couple of goals to make it 3 2. And well, a centering pass and a shot taken by. Weissenden was blocked back at the point. Aho sends it back in. 
That's Kerry Aho, a Finn. Not related to Sebastian Aho, a Finn, or Sebastian Aho, a Swede. If you're scoring along at home. Popular name. Bison it moves in, but he's moved off the puck by Harrell. Meyer comes in. Oscar Meyer had a great scoring chance for Austria in the first period. Has it taken away by Puthio. And now Lindner goes back. And one thing, when Austria plays Canada tomorrow, years from now, those kids will point to NHL games and say, I played against that guy. Oh, sure. Look at, we've seen this so many times. Like for many of these youngsters, this, this tournament is the biggest games they'll ever play. Lots will go on to pro careers in Europe and they'll play a long time, but they won't have the impact of, of what they get to, to do to play at this time in this stage. That's why I felt, you know, you feel badly for the kids last year that had, there was no atmosphere in here, and this year it's, you know, we're just in just such a crazy time. Yeah, well, the shoots, that's punched, punched away by Radish. These games are being televised, by the way, in Austria. All part of the development plan to expose more people to the sport. Come on. Spins it back in, picked up by Linder now. Along the boards, Geis. Moves out ahead. Van E with it. And Finn Van E sends it in. Icing waved off as he gets there first. The centering pass broken up by Niemela. Topi Niemela. Snaps that rink wide for Kemmel. And away comes Kapanen. Oliver Kapanen drops it back. Niemela back for Kapanen. Missed that pass. And there was a little baby hook there by Sublatting and a penalty coming to Austria. They'll get Sublatting for the hook and the Finns will go to the power play with 5.05 to go. A good glove saved by Radishitz, and then Mata tries to head it in. No luck. Been on the power play here. 5.05 to go in the second period. It's day two of the 2022 World Junior Hockey Championship. Minus 10 in the Vosibirs today. Ball me. You keep saying this like you do, you're, you know, oh, gee, you love the cold. Go ahead. Walk out in your T-shirt. It's minus 30. Here's the envelope with it. Makes that return pass, but he got spun down by Toller. And Toller knocks it out. And now Niemela comes back, but... Oh, there's a hit to the head yeah. called somewhere here. It's going against the Finns. Is it Niemela going off? It is. Topi Niemela goes off. Seven from Finland. Two minutes. Checking the head. So that's also ten. Oh, yeah, well, he raises the left elbow as he goes past taller. Let's see if he, how much contact he makes. Marginal, but the left elbow is where the the call is made. It looks like he kind of hits him in the back of the shoulder, to be honest with you. And no longer an automatic 10 in the IHF rules, which were change this year to make them more in line with the NHL rule book. So the Yamada will sit for two. Here's Simon Taibo. In the four on four. Drops it back for Putio. Putio works in. Drops that back. Himosalmi. Alexei Himosalmi. Swings it back across. Hirvin with it. Seaman Taiva was parked in front. Here's Hirvin and winds and shoots. It goes off a stick and wide. Scooped up by Harrell. Off the boards, but not out. And finally knocked out by Netsasani. Toller tries to play that in, holds the line, and feeds it back in deep inside. Four to go here in the second period. Casper causing some trouble there for the Finns. 
Makes his way off. And Urbanek with it. Brower moves in, but the play's offside. They say that Auer was ahead of the play. 3.41 to go here in the second period. To keep her son alive, she will do whatever it takes. Get into the new series, The Cleaning Lady, Monday, January 3rd, only on CTV. Three forty-one to go here in the second period. Four on four for the next 36 seconds. Then a brief Austrian power play. They scored their only goal of the game on the power play earlier. That was a four on three. Aho around the Putio. The right side of the Finnish defense is good. Putio. Hemo Salami and, and Topi Nimila, they, they move the puck off that side of the ice really well. Kapitan centers it. That's knocked down by Reinbacher. And Urbanek with it. We talked about Thomas Vanek being the best Austrian born and trained player in NHL history, but Michael Roffel was a player signed by the Flyers. Out of the World Championship. And of course, you mentioned Marco Rossi, a first round pick of the Minnesota Wild. They're very excited about him. Here comes Casper, who could be a first round pick in the upcoming NHL draft, chipping that in. Got moved up the puck by Nurmi. But he's been noticeably Austria's best player, is he not? Oh, for sure. The, the trick is going to be you're going to draft Casper. And then that team, whoever it is, has to develop them. They've got to have a plan. Where's the best place for them to right. play? It'd be worse than Sweden. Oh, for sure. But there's got, you can't, uh, in my mind, and, I, and teams don't do it anymore, but before you used to just leave a player to play. Now you've got to help each step of the way as they get stronger and grow. Yeah, Varanta moves in a backhand shot. Stopped by Ranishit. Here's Lambert on it. Plays it back around Himasalmi. Back in the corner for Koivinen. Koivinen swings back to Himasalmi. Helenius with it. And it knocked away by Netsasani. And the teams are back to five on five. Yemela long shot that was blocked in front. And the man who blocked it, Johan Turing, sends it ahead. Himasalmi. For Niemela. Topi Niemela. For Koivinen. Brings that back around. Lambert left it there. Here's Meyer back with it. Hegenmuller. Plays it back into the finish zone. Aho takes that return pass from Niemela. And Koivinen sends it down. Hellenius back around for Lambert. Now played across to Aho. He got bumped. Hirvinen back around to Mata. Putio. Long wrist shot deflected. Radish the save. And the rebound picked up by Harrell. Engelmuller plays it back in. Final minute now, the second period. Aho. Lead pass to Simon Teibel. In comes Simon Teibel. And a good job defending by Sablatic. Simon Teibel drops that back. Matha was taken down. Linder trying to take it free. And a hand pass called against the Finns with 15 seconds to go in the second period. Well, when Urbanic made it two to one, Austria hasn't had a shot since almost 15 minutes as the Finns have continually controlled the pace and play of this game. 37 shots on goal here as we round out the second period. Gets tougher for the Finns from here. Czechia in a couple days time and then Canada to close things out on New Year's Eve. Yarvinti in, shoots, and Ranishitz makes the stop on that. It's been pretty quiet. Yarvinti, his first game out. 
of quarantine and COVID protocols. He's been sitting around for a while, had a little bit of work before he was able to get into the game. And it's maybe the advantage of the schedule playing Germany and Austria first is the Finns can get themselves organize the way they want their lines before they head into the stiffer competition. Some players have talked in the NHL about the lingering effects coming off the COVID list that it takes a couple of weeks to get back up to speed. Of course, there's no no real way to know. I mean, there's certainly no history to it. Garbage shoots, he powdered that high and wide. And Austria gets its first of the tournament but trails four to one. After 40 minutes of play, you're watching the 2022 World Junior Hockey Championship from Edmonton and Red Deer. Our second admission is coming up with James Duffy and Bob McKenzie. For more than 80 years, ESSO has supported Canadian hockey with programs like the ESSO Medals of Achievement, ESSO Fun Days, and the ESSO Cup through our long-standing partnership with Canada's national teams. ESSO, proud premier partner of Hockey Canada. The second intermission is brought to you by Canadian Tire, proud partner of Hockey Canada. The World Juniors is not the end of great junior hockey on TSN because the CHL returns to TSN January 14th. Watch as the future of hockey battle for the opportunity to become the next generation of superstars. Welcome to the CHL on TSN, where every shift counts. James Duthie and Bob McKenzie back with your second intermission. 38 to 6, the shots. It's looking like a Cowboys Washington halftime score from last night. A, a lot of these players, Bob, it'll take them a few years to, you know, to grow into their bodies to really fill in. So I'm always amazed when a guy shows up at a World Junior, still a teenager, and he's got that NHL thickness already. And Simon Tyvel has that for Finland. What's impressed you about him? Well, he's got a lot of jump, and he's going to the harder areas to score. And Ray was talking about he is undersized, but he's trying to get to the inside and make something happen and he's an LA King prospect and he's been very noticeable in the first four periods of hockey for first five periods of hockey for Finland at this World Junior Championship and here is a case where he goes to the net gets to the inside takes a little bump afterwards doesn't like that very much but what he's doing too is he's not just here to try and win a gold medal he's obviously trying to win a contract in the National Hockey League it's one thing to get drafted by the LA Kings in the third round and here's a good example of his speed and the ability to jump into holes even though he's not able to finish this when it gets knocked off his stick but the thing with the Kings is they've got so many prospects so many good young players over the the, the rebuild that was started a few years ago where you've got guys like Turcotte and Byfield and others in the system um, and then you've got a, even a guy like Hellenius who's played very well here for Finland he's also a Kings prospect and you've got Seaman Tyvel who's playing very well here but still doesn't have that National Hockey League contract so you know there's a lot at stake here gold medals and NHL contracts and this all goes into the mix for them right let's get to our pond to podium teachable moment brought to you by Canadian Tire and you're going to show a little bit of love to the Austrian power play yeah absolutely they do a really nice job of moving the, the puck around and keep an eye on number six for the Austrians our he does a really nice job here and putting it back to Urbanic and Urbanic shifts over and the four on three power play that finds an open shooting lane before he gets the puck. There he goes, moves into the open lane and the Finns can't close it off and you gotta love <laughs> those four on three power plays, much more effective than the five on four. Hey, not all bad for Austria. Remember they scored one goal in the entire tournament last year, so they've already equaled that with still three games at least and one period to go. But a big hole here against Finland when you're getting outshot that badly against a really strong Finnish team. Up next, Craig Button on Martin Kromiak. Matt V. Mishkoff and the other developing storylines in this World Juniors. A bit of teamwork, a bit of determination, and a bit of confidence go a long way. Timbits Hockey is proud to support 100,000 kids across Canada each year, giving them a little bit of extra help and a whole lot of fun. 
is Team Canada practicing right now? A couple of developments from there today. Xavier Bourgo is not practicing, took a high hit yesterday in the game. And Justin Surtif, remember, was penalized for another high hit. Uh, could be disciplined for that. So we'll pay attention to both of those stories as Canada gets set for Austria in its second game. All right, happy to be back in two venues in Alberta, Edmonton and Red Deer, where we uh, beam in our Craig Button, who you'll hear on a couple of games today. But this is hot bushing button issues with Craig. Look, he looks so real, real life, just a few feet away from us. All right, Craig, three questions about the tournament so far. You give me the answers. Which is more surprising, that Owen Power scored a hat-trick yesterday or that it was the first hat-trick of his life? I think it was more surprising, James, that he scored a hat trick in his first World Junior hockey game. Because if you keep this in mind, there has never been a defenseman score a hat trick for Team Canada at the World Juniors. And they've had some pretty top notch defensemen. You think about Dion Phaneuf with that bomb of a shot, you would have thought maybe he would have been able to do it. But the fact that he scored it, not only in the first World Junior game, but his first hat trick ever, pretty impressive time to do it. Who was the best Kingston Frontenac on the ice at the World Juniors yesterday? Was it Shane Wright or his line mate from Slovakia in Martin Kromiak? Well, what I would tell you, James, is that in the face-off circle, Shane Wright was 9-1. and one. Pretty impressive. But the game for Martin Kromiak was so impressive. He scored both goals. He drove the offense for Slovakia in that game. He not only scored those two goals, James, he had some glorious opportunities, including one late in the game where he could have tied it up 3-3. Just a real going concern for the Slovaks in that game where they just fell a little bit short to the USA. And finally, a video daily double for you, Craig. Who had the best between the legs <laughs> move goal in day one at the World Juniors? Was it Russia's Matvey Mishkov? Still not sure how this counted when he ran right into the goalie, but it was a heck of a move. Or Czechia's Stanislav Svozil, who also pulled it off yesterday. There was a ton of brilliant moves yesterday. Which of these did you like better, Craig Button? I like the Mishkov one better. I mean, the Svozil one was very impressive. He got cross-checked into the net. That's why he went into the goaltender. But Mishkov, the way he's so quick, and the minute he opened up his hands, I was watching, I go, uh-oh, Anton Olsen is in trouble. And he certainly was. And the ability that he has to not only have the fast hands, but the fast feet and to open up defenders, so impressive. Yeah, a couple of weird goals from Mishkov yesterday. That one going into the net and then one from basically behind the net that somehow went in. You'll hear lots more of Craig Button on TSN today. Uh, up next, of course, would be Russia and Slovakia game. It's your Swiss game with next Russians and Swiss. A lot of games going on today, four of them on TSN. And in this one, it's four to one Finland over Austria. The second intermission was brought to you by Canadian Tire, proud partner of Hockey Canada. Second period scoring summary is brought to you by Canadian Tire. Cariajo with the only two-point second period. It's a two-goal second period and a three-goal lead for Finland. Gordon Ray have the call. Thank you, James. Stop me if you've heard this before, but in Billy Koivinen, the Carolina Hurricanes have an interesting-looking prospect. Yeah, and he's a, a typical Finnish player. He's quick. He's industrious. He gets to the net, and he can play the game. So Koivinen uh, had an assist in the first game. He's been really good in this one here. He gets a, a freebie on a beautiful pass from Brad Lambert. This line has been terrific. I, I like the tenacity that he plays with as he sets up the second goal of the game. He's, he's got skill. He'll get himself into the middle of the play. He crashed the net and ended up creating all kinds of havoc a couple of times. And this chance almost became another goal for him. Billy Coivin in a second round pick of Carolina this past year makes a nice backtrack and that leads to more chances. The Finns have been by far the better team. Koivinen has been one of the best players today. I really like the way he plays. And this line has done some damage combining for seven goals so far in the first two games. And there is Marco Castro. If you missed it earlier, Bob McKenzie did kind of a flash poll of scouts this week and they had Casper as one of the top 10 prospects in the tournament. 
It, it's going to be hard to see what he can do because they're, they're overmatched in a lot of the game. And right. So, you know, if, if you play a give and go game, there's a lot of times there'll be a give and there's no go. You know, the puck doesn't come back to you, but you can, the scouts look at what part of the game he can impact and what his strengths are. He's a good skater. It's a good read to intercept that pass and a good play to keep it on side. Slides that back. Urbanek, who has the Austrian goal, rings it back around. Simon Tybel waiting for it. Casper stepped into him and knocked him off the puck. We talked about the 05 World Championship in Austria. And in the case of Andrzej Kopitar for Slovenia, that was the same problem. What were you looking at? He played in the Swedish League for a few years, so they, they had a good book on him there. But at the championship, he was by far their best player. But the problem is when you're playing in the Swedish League, you're just a boy. You're right. a teenager playing against these developed players in a very structured league. Campbell yeah, played that back, and that long shot taken by Kari Ajo goes wide. Here's Putio on it now. Putio steps up. The bump there by Reinbacher. And here's Rappel. Moves it back out, knocked away from him. Reinbacher goes back as Kapitan steps in. Still to come today, Russia and Switzerland, the first game in Red Deer. Coming up shortly. And you got Germany and Czechia here. And the nightcap is Sweden versus Slovakia. Tomorrow, just two games, one in each venue. Austria plays Canada, and Switzerland takes on the United States in Red Deer. Amos Salmi fires it up the end boards. He was looking for an indirect pass to Lambert, but Lambert didn't get there in time, or so they said. And so icing called against the Finns. Austria scored one goal last year. Marco Casper set it up. Here's his anticipation as he reads the cross crease play. He waits for the puck to come back so it's not offside. And then he uses his strength to run into Simon Teibel, knock him off the puck as well. It's a really good example of the way Casper can impact the game on his first shift of this third period. Harrell with a shot that was blocked by Hellenius. A chance for an odd man rush now for Finland. Hellenius drops it back, and that shot by Koivinen goes wide. He's looking for Lambert on the tip. It's, that line gets another chance. Mm -hmm. And Lambert waiting for it. Up to Hellenius. Drops it back to Koivinen. He swings it back. Nimala shot a rocket with it wide. Hellenius was standing right on top of Ranishitz. Yeah, that, that might have brought a review, but I mean, he was inside of his equipment. And that's not a small man. <laughs> I always remember I was screening Garth Snow one day, and wherever we were playing, he was playing for Philadelphia, and I'm trying to, you know, say, take away his eyes, and he says as the play is going on, is this a screen? <laughs> and I'm like, just beat it, Snow. Well, if you have to ask, <laughs> I'm doing my best. He was just looking right over my head. Dives <laughs> with it. That long shot, Chris Wide. Dives tries to swing that back in. Knocked down by Carvinen. Center ice. Aho back with it. Austria's got the checks, or Finland rather has the checks on December 29th. And then wraps up against Canada on New Year's Eve. have three gold medals the last eight years in this tournament. They've also won the under-18s twice, and they won the World Championship. And just watching the way they play here, I mean, they're they're going to be a problem in this tournament. They're, I know the three big teams are on the other side, but... Well, the trick's going to be, Ray, you know, you're going to get some tough quarterfinal matchups. Well, that first, that first place in this division is pretty important. I mean, in Division A, you'd really like to, to stay away from those other three teams. Now Kemmel centers it for Yarvin C, but he's offside, and the play is called. That's I mean, assuming that, you know, Russia, Sweden, USA finish 
in the top three. What if one of them loses a couple of games and finishes fourth? Uh, we've seen it before. We've also seen, although the, the Russian team looks a little loose in this tournament, but we've seen it many, many times that they just gradually get stronger as the tournament goes along. Austria's gone 20 minutes without a shot in this game. The last shot was the goal by Urban. Well, they're going to get a power play, so they get a chance here. That's an interference call. Austria's one for three on the power play, although one of the Finland power plays. Finland number seven, minor penalty interference. It was a 10, 10 or 15 second job. But right. So Niemela goes off. Not been a great start to the tournament for Niemela. Now well, there's uh, the interference call as he adjusts the route mm -hmm. of Matthias Boom and. Team Finland penalty number seven. Takes the return pass, brings it across to Casper, who's in the penalty box when the Austrians scored that power play goal. And Urbanek can't knock it down at the line. Urbanek got stripped there by Hellenius. Urbanek's five foot eight. And now it's centered. And he's getting the shoot. Saved by Baranishitz on the shorthanded chance. Well, he's 5'8", and he's now in a puck battle with the 6'6", six six Hellenius. You know how that's going to turn out most of the time. Kaspar to Urbanek. Minute 15 to go on this power play. Trying to knock it down was Rauer. And that puck goes over the glass and out. The faceoff will stay in the finish zone. Hellenius with the chance after initially foiling the breakout behind the net. From about the same distance that he scored in the first period, this time Ranishitz beats him with the with the pad stop. Capitan on it. Fired wide off the glass by Putio and back down the ice. Stop laughing back to pick it up. Interesting, the Austrians, unlike some other smaller teams in the tournament, don't leave their top guys out for the whole power play. Sherry moves in. Most of this team will be back for Austria next year. Yeah, 15 can return. And as you mentioned, with no relegation, literally back in this tournament, they don't have to start trying to climb the ladder. Stop laughing. Inside, 20 seconds to go in the power play. Works that back to Casper, back up. Marco Casper with a shot that deflects wide. Schurich to Boom. And now Casper tries to hold the line on Hellenius and does for the moment. Putio. Looks out ahead, Niemela steps out of the box and takes that lead pass from Hellenius. Back to pick it up is Kasper. Native of Innsbruck. Steps into Simon Teibel. Herbert and centers it, and that's tipped away by the defenseman, Lawrence Lindner. And Nurmi back to pick it up. Emma Salmi. Up for Mata. He got tangled up at center ice. Hour back the other way for Austria. Hour shoots, and the glove stop is made by Yadkula. 12.59 to go in the third period. Finland leads 4-1. to one. Time now for the shift of the game, fueled by Gatorade. A 1-0 lead, and the Finns will get on the board at 2-0 here. Really strong forecheck behind the net by Koivinen as he steals the puck. With good body position, and Hellenius is in perfect position to take the pass and one time it by the goaltender for a 2 0 finish lead. Ryan Bakker is shot that reflects wide. So Austria finally has a shot. It's first of the period, came just before that TV timeout. Well over 20 minutes without one. Kimmel. Played that back around. 
One thing the Austrians haven't done in this game is really sit back. No, I think they've tried to play as quickly and aggressively as they can, which is really a step change from what the smaller countries used to do, which was just right. try to defend, defend, defend. It just doesn't work. Now a chance on the side of the goal. Ranishitz down. Putio in. Oh. And Ranishitz doing the barrel roll makes the save. Well, that was interesting. Total scramble in the net, but never giving up on the play. Some help from his friends, and the save is made. Forty shots for Ranisic at this point. Most of them seem to be from pretty difficult areas. As here it is, scramble and tight, and he's going to have to roll his way back. Oh, it's actually the defenseman. Well, it's Luca Auer, the forward, who's back in the goal crease to make the stop. Linus got poke check there by Harrell. Out the other side, it goes to Lambert. Ooh. Up for Koivinen. Tolerant plays it back around. Here's Koivinen. And then Koivin back for him. Asalmi shoots at the flex wide up the other side. It goes to Lambert. Lambert spins and throws that towards the goal. Bouncing puck and a penalty coming. They score. Koivin lunging for the puck. Taps it in. It's 5 1 Finland. Well, the Finns thought a lot of their offense would come from Simon Teibel and Hirvonen. And Mata, but it's been this line that's done most of the damage. A long wrist shot, and Hellenius gets in front of the net. Man, he's impossible to move. And as he's in front with Horl, Koivinen is going to get himself to the front in a spinning effort, his second of the game, as he squeaks it between the goaltender and the post, and it's 5-1. Koivinen, native of Olu, he plays for his hometown team for Karpat in the Finnish league. Has nine goals in 30 games this year, playing in the Finnish men's league as an 18-year-old. It's now known as SM Liga, but long called the Finnish elite league. Mosami banks that down. A league that has done all right despite the departure of Jokrit Helsinki to the KHL. Very controversial and impactful move by that legendary team. Puck loose in the corner. Picked off now by Carbonin. He's running Carbonin sends it back in. Emma Salmi. Down to Bison. And Bison then shovels that back at the point, but it bounced away from Nerman. Here's the Emelo with it. And now jumping in is Mata, but the play is offside at the Austrian line. So the line of Lambert, Hellenius, and Koivinen continues to go to work. And Lambert retrieves the loose puck and just throws it to the front of the net. Koivin and actually is in front of Kaspar. It's two goals Kaspar's been in the picture of. One by Simon Teibel in the second period, and this one here, where not quite firm enough on his on the guy that he has to check. This time it's Koivin and he's able to spin it into the net. Simon Teibel up ahead for Mata. And Simon Teibel retrieves the puck. A punch there by Ruppel. Back at the point, Niemela. Swings it across to Derby with a long wrist shot. Pad saved by Ranishitz. Pass the midway point of the third period. Niemela tees it up and shoots, scores! Niemela with a rocket from the point. And it's 6-1 Finland.
I mentioned when Niemela went to the penalty box earlier, not the best of starts for him in this tournament. Last year's defenseman of the tournament scored a couple of times last year. He's on the board here as he rockets this one-timer off the pass from Mata. And he flings this by the goaltender's blocker side and the, the Finns now have two goals in each period and a 6-1 lead. Two goals in just under two minutes for the Finns here in the third. So Niemela, who's a third round pick of Toronto in 2020, as his first of this World Junior Championship. Got eight points in seven games last year. And this year having a very productive year as a 19-year-old in the finish league for Carpat. 24 points in 31 games. Pukio back for it. Swing that ahead for Aho. He was tied up. Capital up for Kemmel, who throws that rink wide. Taller. But tied up in the corner. Taller swings that back. Now Vero. That shot was blocked. It's fired wide by Capital. Now Kemmel a chance. He pounded that wide. Luca Auer lifts that ahead and out. And not Kemmel stick out his hands in the process. Lead pass to Lambert. Back to Hemasami. Rink wide he goes for Koivinen. Collar on it. Hellenius tried to center it. Now Hemasami plays it back in. Brought up by Reinbacher. He spent the last six years in Switzerland. He flips it down. The pass missed. Icing called against Austria. We get another look at Niemela's goal to make it 6-1 for the Finns. Is the pass from Mata is not really flat. It's kind of wavering around, and you see the puck fly off the stick, beat the goaltender around the sheets on the blocker side. Almost everyone getting on the board now here with six for the Finns. Nermi flips that back in. Casper trying to knock that down. It's flipped back to center ice by Taller. And back is Carroll to pick it up. As I mentioned, plays at the Red Bull Academy, which is for soccer and hockey players. Nearly 500 young athletes are at that academy. Located in Salzburg, Austria. There's a centering pass for Seaman Teibel that's knocked away by Geis. Lindner. Off the boards and back out to center. Puthio back for it. For Ajo. Fight! That shot drifts wide. It's an icing call against the Finns. And the Finns will end up with a day off tomorrow. Well, not that you can do anything, but it's a day off and get a practice in. They play the Czechs on the 29th, and Austria will spin around and play Canada tomorrow. Canada with a couple of lineup decisions. One that might be made for them. Right, as Justin sort of is having a hit reviewed. He had a high hit in the third period yesterday. And Borgo was hit in the second period and it's a question mark tomorrow as well. So in a normal format, Ray, the game for Austria that would matter the most would be against Germany on New Year's Eve because that would be the game where the winning team would get itself into the quarterfinals and the loser would play the relegation side. Which is all gone this year. Now Denmark, they were the kings of winning that one game they had to win. 
survived for five years at the top level. Usually by winning once. There's a centering pass that just missed Meyer. Another chance from the boards taken by Auer, and that's gloved by Yatkula. 6.02 to go here in the third period of the 2022 World Junior Hockey Championship. So tomorrow, one game here in Edmonton. It'll be Canada versus Austria. Coverage starts at 4.30 Eastern time, 3.30 Pacific. In Red Dead, it'll be Switzerland against the United States tomorrow. Last time the tournament was played in Red Deer was in 1995. It was the last year of the straight round robin format. You played seven games, played all the other teams in the tournament once. And whoever had the best record won the gold medal. Sometimes the last game decided it, like in 1991 in Saskatoon when Canada played the Soviets. Other times you win the gold medal in your dressing room. Look out. Manish has played it right to the hands of Lambert, and Lambert makes him pay as he slides it in to make it 7-1. Whoops. Yeah, he fans on this here, and what I'm seeing is Brad Lambert likes to score. <laughs> and I, I, that's, honestly, that's how I was, too. I mean, he hunts this puck down. So he's got to have the effort to go get it. But watch when he scores here. It's now 7-1. He's going to give a little fist pump on the way by. Lambert after... Coming into the tournament off a struggle through the first half of his season has had an excellent start. This line seems to score every period. Lambert's got a goal and a couple assists today. Here's Nervy bringing it up now for Finland. Flips out ahead. Casper trying to knock it down. And the bouncy puck loses the side of the goal. Pavarenta couldn't reach it. Moved ahead to Taller. Look as Taller dropped that back. It's picked off. And it's stolen right back by the Austrians. Rara couldn't get a shot away. And that's a Sani back with it. And then Rauer shoots and a glove save made by Yatkala. Five to go in the third period. Finland, 7 1 lead on Austria. Here's the effort by Brad Lambert as he hustles down the ice and then gets a gift when Ranishit fans on the clearing attempt. Lambert for his work. Gets the smile on the bench as he has five points in the first two games of this tournament. I mentioned his dad, Ross, is a Canadian from Kindersley, Saskatchewan. He's been a long time in Europe and has been a long time coach in Finland. And you've got friends that have done that. Mike Zanier, a former goalie here for the Edmonton Oilers, has been in Sweden for a long time. Sweden. He's, now he's, uh, he's a broadcaster there, right? Broadcaster. In Swedish which is remarkable <laughs> his kids like to give him the gears that he doesn't speak very good English or doesn't speak like well, doesn't speak good English either but, <laughs> but his Swedish is a little rough but hey uh, he can't hear me <laughs> better than ours that's pretty impressive it's remarkable no, no, I'm that... talking about his English <laughs> it is remarkable the number of people who have made a you know, made a life of the game over there your son's playing in Germany right now and who was the uh, Dave Henderson, the French coach? Yeah, he went over there as a with a, as with a youngster one, to, to go play, play one pro. year. Yep. Got to be a lark to play for one year. He wound up staying there for 50 and coaching their national team for 20. Kemmel drops that back. Hero is shot. He ripped that high. Kemmel swings that back to Vero. Across the Hamel Salmi. Off the boards comes Yarventy. Roby Yarventy swings it back in front. The shot by Kapanen rolled wide. Kemmel centers it again. It's a keep away clinic now by the Finns. As the puck moves to the sideboards and Geist sends it back to center.
Athens will be the host nation for the World Championship in May. Helsinki and Tempera. With that puck went off the glass, up and out of play. Scheduled for May. Yarventi, who is playing his first game of the tournament, makes a nice little back pass and Kapanen and whips on it. He said last year he didn't play very well in this tournament. He didn't like his tournament. He wants to be better. This year, of course, he's got a slow start out of the gate as he had to complete his protocol. Right. Lambert swings that back, goes off a stick and back down the ice. Inside three to go in the third. And Yuha Yatkala, who has not been very busy here this afternoon, just facing nine shots, plays it back around. Interesting that Joel Blomquist is the backup today for the Finns. He didn't dress yesterday for the game against Germany. He's the backup today. He's the Pittsburgh second round pick. Really kind of, uh, you, you wonder where the, their packing order is, but clearly he somehow slipped the third, which is what he was last year. He was the third goaltender here last year. He, for didn't, the he didn't play, so. He's having a great year, though, in the Finnish league. And it looks like Marilainen, who got the start against Germany, will be their number one, at least to start. That's the pass went off a skate. And there's Vicenden with it. Vicenden in across the line. Shoots. He rattled that high and wide. Taller pokes at that. Now picked up by Koivinen. Koivinen drops it back. Vicenden shoots at the goal post. And Vicenden back to pick it up. Putio pounds it back in. And that puck bounces into the Austrian bench with 125 to go in the third period. Well, they've got seven. They've got four pipes as well today. And a clean chance for Weisenen. Weisenen, it goes off the pad of Reine Sheets and off the crossbar and out. Another chance from dead in the slot, right in the middle of the ice for the Finns. Kirvinen walks in and shoots. Ranischitz was being bumped there. Simon Teibel was all over him. You know, we've not seen the first couple of days as much crease violation call. Well, I, uh, there's not been one, I don't think, in the games that we've done. Sometimes the, you know, the early games are littered with that call. Yeah. Zero. Drops it back. Simon Tymel tries to wind in. He gets pumped there by Luca Erna. He plays for Fresno. In the U.S. Premier Hockey League. Well, Simon Tybel just took a stick in front of the net. It's Lindner. And Simon Tybel slowly made his way to the finish bench. Yeah, it's, he's not going to be too thrilled with this. Vanny moves it out. Now Geis sends it the rest of the way for the Finns, or for the Austrians, rather. And the Finns break it out. Here's Kemp. Joachim Kemmel. Swings it back. And we're into the final few seconds now. Of the third period. The World Junior Marathon yesterday and today. Four games yesterday, four games today. And the first one here. The Finns run their record to 2-0 with a 7-1 win over Austria. And next up on the tournament slate from Red Deer, it's Russia against Switzerland. Later today, the Germans play the Czechs here in Edmonton.
Mountain World Junior Hockey Championship is presented by Esso, proudly fueling Hockey Canada since 1984. By Nike, official gear of Canada's national hockey teams. By TELUS, we're using the power of our purpose to help make the world a better place. Together, let's make the future friendly. And by Tim Hortons, the official coffee of Team Canada. The 2022 World Junior Hockey Championship, brought to you in part by the 2022 Chevrolet Silverado, the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. Chevrolet, find new roads. And by Skip the Dishes, cheer on our team in true Canadian style with your favorite order on Skip, the official food delivery app of Team Canada. It's game time, Canada. Let's get hungry. Your Group A standings pretty much going as expected so far. Canada can tie things up with Finland if they can beat Austria tomorrow. Finns too much today for the Austrians. Don't forget three more games. Russia, Switzerland, Germany, Czechia, Sweden, and Slovakia back here for Germany, Czechia. Bob and I a little bit later on, but right now, Laura Dyken, Dave Reed, Dennis Bayak, Craig Button, Switzerland, Russia from Red Deer. Coming up next, Finland. 2-0 after a 7-1 win over Austria here on TSN.